Hi guys, I'm sitting here with two terminal windows open, just blank terminal windows, and I'm uh, currently, my current working directory is the repository for assignment six. So if I do an ls, you'll see there's the stuff from assignment six. If I do a git status, you'll see I'm up to date with assignment six. So what I want to do is to show you how to export the data from your database in a way that I can import it and test your code for assignment six because I realized everybody's got a different database and it's a lot easier to check your code if I have data and rather than manually go through and figure out everybody's database and manually create data and manually enter data it'd be a lot easier if you guys could just dump what you already have in your database in a way that I could easily import it so what I need you to do is in one window go ahead and run uh, docker compose up to fire up the application so that's going to launch the mongodb server and it's also going to launch the express rest api server and then in another window that's also in the same directory with the same stuff right and in particular it's got to have the docker compose file you can say docker compose ps and what that's going to tell you is the names of the containers that are running the mongodb server and the web server now, in order to export the data, we don't need the web server. So actually, we could we could kill that, but I don't need to. I can just let it run. It doesn't hurt anything. What I want to do is to launch a new container on the same network to pull the data out of the Mongo database. So what I want to do is to also say Docker Network LS to get the name of the network. Now, the name of your network is going to be something like your repository name underscore default. So my network is called assignment six SS pickle default. So I'm going to copy that. And then what I need to do is to uh, go ahead and fire up a new container that is talking to that guy. So what that's going to look like, let's see if I can uh, spell this correctly. Hang on one second. Right. Okay. So it's docker run, and then I'm going to actually, I'll post this, and along with the video, I'll post a text file that has this command in it. I want you to notice something. It's dash dash net, and it has the name of the network. That's, uh, let's just do it this way. So it's docker run, dash dash rm to remove the process when it's finished, dash it to give me an interactive terminal. I want to mount my current directory as the slash scratch directory. That's just a place that the container has access to where I can exchange files between the host and the container. Then I want to say dash dash net, and I'm going to come up here to my um, network name, which is this one, and I just want to copy paste that guy in there. And then I'm going to say dash dash link. I'm going to put the name of the container that's running the MongoDB. That's this one. So I'm going to copy that guy, okay? And then uh, I need to run the MongoDB container, which is uh, Mongo, and it's version number 4.0.2. That's the version specified in the Docker Compose file. So that one will work. And then I run, want to run Bash because it, uh, this container happens to have Bash installed, and it's a much nicer shell. Okay. So now I'm running, let's just see what's here. I'm at the root of this container, right? So, but the nice thing about this container is it's got Mongo export installed. So what I wanna do is to, and also has Mongo. So I might as well point out uh, that it's possible to um, run the Mongo interpreter. So I'll show you how you do that. It's basically the same idea. You say Mongo, you give it a host and you give it a port and if now I'm in an interactive interpreter where I can type commands and um, and look dig, snoop around in the Mongo database so I could say like show DBs it shows me the three databases that are there the one we're using in assignment 6 is called test DB so I can say use test DB and now I'm using that database so if I say uh, show collections it shows me that there's a collection called contacts so I could say db.contacts 
and um, then I could say db.contacts find and that actually goes through and finds all the contacts in my database. I only have one contact in my particular database but you could do this with your database and if you wish to and see what all is there. This can be helpful for debugging and editing data manually if you need to, that kind of thing. Um, so that's how you run the interactive Mongo uh, shell. But what I really want to do is to export this data. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you how that works. And basically, you use the Mongo export command. So uh, let's see how that works. If I type Mongo export, I give it the host name, I give it the port, I give it the database I want to talk to, and I give it the collection I want to export. If I hit enter, it just sends an exported JSON text information to standard output. So it just appears on the screen. But what I really want to do is save that to a file. So I'm going to rerun that command. And instead of um, just sending it to the standard output, I'm going to say right angle bracket. And then I'm going to say scratch. And then data.json. And what that does, notice it didn't spit it out to the screen, but it actually put it uh, into the file data.json. So if I do ls of scratch here, you'll notice there's a data.json file. And if I exit the container and I do an lsla, there's data.json. What's in there? Well, it's the JSON string representation of that one record of my database. If I had more records, I'd have more more strings. So that's all there is to it. So I hope that helps. Please, if you would, go ahead and do that for your data. Let's uh, add it to the repository and then commit it. And then push it. Boom. And that way uh, it'll be in GitHub and I can get to it. Thanks a lot.